Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel. And if you guys have been paying attention to anything at all, you know that the economy is absolutely in the toilet. Inflation's going crazy and seems like our money is becoming worth less and less every day that goes by. But there are still some good prepper and survival items that you can get for under the $100 mark. And that is what we are going to be talking about today. And before we get too deep into the video, I just want to do a little disclaimer that prices change constantly. I made a good faith effort to make sure that everything that I talk about in the video is under the $100 mark, but that could change today. It could change tomorrow, but just know I did try my best. The first really good piece of gear that you can get under $100 is a solar cooker. And the one that I showed here is the all season solar cooker. It's gonna be around $97 and you're gonna be able to, you know, cook a chicken, cook all sorts of other things inside of it. So it's gonna allow you to cook without fuel or anything like that. And then also like right now, we're under a, a burn ban. So using things like maybe rocket stoves or fire pits and things like that. That's probably not the best idea, but you can get away with using a solar cooker in most instances because all the heat stays contained within that. Another good piece of survival gear under $100 is the Door Armor Max. And basically what that is, it is a door reinforcement kit that makes it much harder for somebody to kick your door in. Now, it might not make it impossible, but it's gonna require more effort on their part and more time on their part before they're able to make it into your home. So it has that long metal strip that goes, I think, four feet along the side of your door jam, and it comes with extra long screws that go all the way into the studs, which makes it a lot more sturdy. Then it also has some additional pieces that fit over the latches inside of the doors to make those harder to blow out. And then also pieces to put on your hinges to reinforce those as well. Another good prepper related item under $100 is a can rotator. If you're a prepper, you know that it's very important to store what you eat and rotate what you store so that you always have the freshest stuff possible and it's not likely to go out of date. And even though cans, they can last for years, it's still a good idea to rotate them just so that, you know, those cans don't end up being like 10 or 15 years old shoved at the back of your pantry. And that particular can rotator that I showed is a first in, first out model so that you put it in the top and as you use cans, it rotates down to the bottom. So in theory, you're always using the oldest can in that particular setup. Another good piece of survival gear that you can find for under $100 is a multi-tool. And given prices on multi-tools have gone up significantly the past several years. Like this is a Swiss tool. You can't get this one for under $100 anymore but there are some other ones that you still can. I know that Leatherman has several models that are still available for under $100, and I'm sure some other companies do too. So, of course, multi-tools, they're great. They give you a couple blades, probably some saws, pliers with some little wire cutters in them, other tools like can openers, screwdrivers, wire strippers, things like that. It's just good, something good to keep in, like your backpack, glove box of your car, maybe in your, uh, your, your kitchen drawer, so that you always have at least some type of usable tool with you. Another really good prepper related item under $100 are guard line motion sensors. And what these are, they're basically battery operated motion sensors that connect to a base station within your house, which can be run on either AC power from your wall or a battery backup. The sensors use double A's and the base station uses triple A's. So if you have rechargeable versions of those batteries and something even like a small solar setup, you should be able to keep these running pretty much indefinitely until those batteries wear out. And I mean, and good rechargeable batteries can last for years. So they come in different size sets. Like I think the one sensor and base station is available for under a hundred dollars. 
but of course the price will go up the more sensors that you add. I think the guard line system can be expanded to up to 16 sensors. You can set it up so where if somebody, say, trips the sensor in your front yard, then one sound will go off, but if they trip a sensor in your backyard, another sound will go off. You can set it up that way so that you know or you have a general idea of where the motion is at at any given time. And what this is really good for is, let's say that you have a uh, something like a doorbell camera, and that doorbell camera is always going off, regardless of how you tried to set it up, it always seems to activate whenever like a car drives by or something like that. Well, you know that if you have both that and one of these sensors, if you hear both of them go off, there's a pretty good chance that somebody's at your front door or wherever you have it set up at. Another really good piece of prepper and survival gear under $100 is the Spyderco Sharp Maker. I got this, I think, around a year and a half ago or, or so, and it does an excellent job sharpening different kinds of knives and blades. You can even sharpen things like recurves and um, serrated knife blades with this if you know what you're doing. So it has both a 40 degree angle and a 30 degree angle for sharpening different kind of knives and really all you got to do for most of the time is keep it straight and swipe back and forth between the two rods. But of course if you have the odd knife that isn't at those angles you can either tilt it in or take these out and go freehand. I've done that a lot and I've gotten pretty good results. This is largely responsible for me not having much hair on my forearms because I'll sharpen it and then my sharpness test is seeing if it'll shave and does a pretty good job. I might have had more hair on my arm in uh, like high school or college than I do now just because I sharpen knives and then shave that spot just to see if they're sharp. But it comes with these medium stones, these white stones are fine stones, and then you can purchase additional ones. I haven't done that yet, but they have some ultra fine stones and um, also some diamond coated rods that you can use with this system. But if you take these out, oops, that's being stubborn on camera. I hate you. There we go. All right. You can actually turn this over, set the stones down in there so that you can sharpen freehand like that as well. Another good survival item that you can get for under $100 is different kinds of flashlights. And y'all, I'm not here to necessarily recommend any particular brand or model. I mean, I got a couple O lights here. I know that some of y'all aren't the biggest fans of them. And quite frankly, I've had some issues with the switches on uh, their, their Warrior series, so I completely get that. But there's other brands, things, like I believe it's Streamlight, they have some good flashlights that are available for $100 or less. And really, you don't even have to spend $100 to get a decent quality flashlight. I think decent flashlights probably start within the $30 to $50 mark. So if you're thinking, man, $100 is a lot to drop for a flashlight, you're probably right, but you don't have to spend that much. I uh, think these XL50s, I mean, you can tell this thing is old. It's been used a lot. I think I've had this. Good night. Um, let's see. I think I got it in 2014 or 2015. So, I mean, it's it's been in use for a while. It's now my bedside light. I, I, I carry this one, but I keep this one by my bed. But, I mean, still works perfectly fine. It's been dropped numerous times. I'm not sure of the regular price on these now. I think the last time I checked it might have been 50. I could be wrong about that, but I mean, this has been a good flashlight for me over the years. And then of course, you know, there's other brands too. I haven't used them, but I've seen a lot of people use Coast flashlights. I don't know if they're any good or not, but those are usually available under the $100 mark as well. Another good piece of survival gear under $100 are Grail water purifiers. This is the GeoPress, and I think it is pushing $100 right now. I think it's $99, but it's going to do a good job removing things like bacteria, viruses, chemicals from the water. So, I mean, really, it's going to be able to remove pretty much anything that you could be worried about, whether you're in a wilderness situation or even an urban setting. And I think something like this is a good option, especially if you're in an urban environment, because there's no telling what is going to be in that water. If you're far out in the wilderness, then, I mean, something like 
a Sawyer Mini is probably going to be fine because if there hasn't been a whole lot of human activity out there, there's probably a good chance that there's not you know, as many chemicals to worry about. People probably haven't uh, relieved themselves in nearby water sources and caused you know, viral contamination and all that kind of stuff. But in the city, you could have all of that. So something like this would be good at giving you a little bit of peace of mind to keep in something like your bug out bag or even your EDC bag. I carried this in my work backpack for, for a while because, I mean, it also does a decent job getting rid of bad tastes in the water. I don't think there's a city or town anywhere near where I live that has what you would call good water. So having something like this would, you know, make your water more tasty during daily life. But if something goes down while you're at work or at the park or wherever and you have this with you, then you also have a very good high quality water purifier that'll do a good job removing pretty much anything that you would need it to that you could use until you're able to get to home, get to safety, wherever you need to be. Another good item that's available for under $100 are different kinds of respirators and then also gas mask cartridges. So especially if you're in an urban environment, there's a good chance that you could be dealing with things like smoke or other respiratory irritants. And having something like a respirator or even a gas mask can go a long way towards keeping you safe and able to deal with that situation in the most effective way possible. Now, a respirator like this, I think this one with the face piece and then also one that comes with the removable cartridges, I believe they're around $50 now. This is what I use to do like painting, sanding, or if I'm using different kinds of chemicals that I don't want to breathe in because they will do a very good job removing those. And the cartridges, you can get those, I think, for around $20 or $25 uh, for replacement. So you can use this mask for quite a while. Now, of course, one weakness to them is going to be that they don't protect your eyes. I mean, they protect that part of your face, and that's about it. But for a lot of situations, that might be all that you need, and if you can't afford like a two or $300 gas mask, something like that might be a good option. And there might be some decent surplus gas masks that are available for under $100. I'm not really sure. Um, but anyway, so respirators like this are good. That's made by 3M. And then also you can get good gas mask filters for under $100 as well. This is the Mira Safety uh, NBC SOF 77, I believe. And I think these are around $70 or $80 now. So if maybe you already have a gas mask, and I know this is kind of a specialized item, you can get these for under $100, even though you can't, of course, get the mask for that price. Another good piece of survival gear that you can get for under $100 is the Kelly Kettle. And this one is the base camp, and if you just get the kettle, which consists of the kettle itself and then the fire base, I think that's around $80 or $90 right now, and the smaller models, the Trekker and the Scout, are available for slightly less. So you can get this for under $100. Now, if you want to add things like a grill top to put over your fire base or the hobo stove to put on top of here, and then like plates and measuring cups and stuff like that, then of course the price will go up. Like this is part of the Base Camp Ultimate Kit, and I think that was around $175, $180 when I got it. But if you're just wanting the kettle, you can get that for under $100, and you're going to be able to do things like boil water. Um, and, I mean, if you're going to be relying on, like, freeze-dried food and stuff like that, that'll do pretty much everything you need it to do to allow you to be able to prepare that food. And then of course, being able to boil water in a survival situation is incredibly useful just by itself. One really good prepper and survival item available for under $100 are camp stoves. Here I have a couple of propane camp stoves here. This is the Coleman Fold and Go. I've had this for almost 15 years. I got it in late 2007. And the only thing that's wrong with it is the electronic ignition, the little clicky switches here, they don't work as well as they used to. I think one doesn't work at all. 
But in all honesty, if you have something like a ferro rod matches or a lighter, you should be able to get these going no problem at all. And propane camp stoves, they can last pretty much forever. This one over here, I think, was, a, that was, was from like an antique store or a garage sale or something like that. But between the two, I think it might actually be better to get something like this because you have the back covered, you have the sides covered so that wind won't blow your flame out or blow it a certain direction that's not helpful while you're cooking. Now, as far as more portable options, I think you can get a jet boil zip, I believe, for under $100 as well. But even if you do have something like a Kelly kettle or something like that, Something like this will make your job a lot easier if you're dealing with something like a short-term emergency, like a power outage because of a weather situation, whatever the case may be, because all you're going to have to do is unfold it, set it up, plug in a propane bottle, and then you're good to go. Now, if you want to cook indoors, I think butane stoves might be slightly safer. I think those tend to burn a little bit cleaner. So if you have something like an indoor safe butane stove, a carbon monoxide alarm that's battery powered and you're able to crack a window, I don't think you'll have any problems. Another good prepper or survival related item under $100 is cast iron cookware. This is a Dutch oven with a uh, grill pan top. And I got this, I think, for $79 a while back. But of course, being a Dutch oven, you're going to be able to do everything from make different kinds of soups and chili to even baking bread inside of this thing. And cast iron, it's great because you can put it in your oven, on your stovetop, even on coals from like a campfire, and it's going to be perfectly fine. And then having the grill top, that's going to be nice too because you can just Stick this on something like a camp stove, rocket stove, or even your stovetop in your home and be able to grill different kinds of things. Like this would be good for sausages. Probably also be good if you wanted to cook burgers inside of your house on your stovetop. And then skillets, you can find those for and even cheaper. I mean, uh, I think most skillets are probably going to be in the $20 to $40 range. This one is very old. It's not something I bought myself. It's been in the family for a long time, but we're, we're still using it. I mean, I literally went and pulled this off of our stovetop like just a couple minutes ago because we use this all the time for doing things like browning meats, heating sauces, things like that. The only thing I wish I had for it was a lid and I need to get one of those. But the good thing about cast iron is a lot of times you can get it in different types of, I guess you could say, kits where it'll come with something like maybe a skillet and a Dutch oven or, or different kinds of things. You can also get like griddle tops for them. But really, I think if you have something like a skillet and a Dutch oven, especially if it has a grill top, then that's going to cover a lot of your bases. And of course, you can get Dutch ovens that have the little feet on the bottom of them, and those are better for if you're gonna be using them with things like campfires. And another good thing that's available under $100 is good sturdy footwear. Now, of course, with footwear, you can get crazy expensive with it, but there is some good stuff that's available for around $100 or less. Like, these are my shoes I wear every day. They are Merrill, I think, Moabs. And I like this shoe so much that every time that the current pair I'm wearing wears out, I just go buy another one. So I've been using the Merrill Moabs for I don't even know how many years now. It's almost embarrassing. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like an old guy. I, I find something I like and then I stick with it. If you see pictures of me six years ago, I'm probably wearing a pair of shoes almost exactly like this one, maybe exactly like this one. I've kind of bounced back and forth between the waterproof models. Usually the waterproof ones, I think they're a little more expensive and they just make your feet hot which in Texas is a big thing. But also, um, I mean, if you're somebody who likes to hunt or even if you just live in an area where there's a lot of cold weather, I think I got these for around $100. I don't think this specific model is available anymore, but I went on the Cabela's website and I was able to find, I guess, the current model of this one and it was 99 bucks, but these are waterproof. They're good cold weather boots. 
And of course, there's other things that are similar. If you don't need cold weather boots, you can probably find some maybe military style boots or footwear or something like that. That would be useful if you're outdoors or if you need a good sturdy footwear. Sorry, if you needed to bug out. And y'all, I know that $100 is a lot of money. So if you watch this video, be like, oh good, a bunch of stuff I can't afford. Then be sure to check out my other videos like I did one a while back, which was best prepper and survival gear under $60. I will put a card up there. It was the stuff that you can still afford for now video. And then also the best prepper and survival gear. I think it was under $20 or $25. I'll put that card there. So y'all have a good and thanks again.